Okay, and welcome to the video for Project 5. This is the video for Project 5. Uh, Project 5 has five parts, just like the other projects, but I'm only going to make uh, one video for it. I'm going to walk through the major things in this video for all five parts of the projects, and then for the rest of the project, I'm expecting you to be able to follow the instructions that I have here in the handout, and to be able to read the MATLAB documentation about things that you may not know about yet. And, this, and the whole purpose of this is to get you into the MATLAB documentation and used to uh, reading that instead of relying on, you know, for example, my video or my handout. So we're just going to cover the key concepts that you need in this video, and then um, I'll be in class to help you uh, work through it if you get stuck. Okay, so the goal of the project is to make a uh, piece of S chart for the F-16, like this chart that you see here. And this is also figure 5.2 in Dr. Brandt's textbook. So we're going to make this uh, using MATLAB. Uh, this is an excellent chart that I have uh, here. I have uh, a title on the chart here, which is appropriate for a, a presentation or something, but uh, unnecessary for being embedded in a document as a figure uh, that has a caption. But I have the title here. I have an annotation box here that has a white background that says the key information about the F-16 uh, pertaining to this plot. Uh, I have some key text labels on my plot here defining you know, the stall limit, the uh, dynamic pressure limit, my contours are labeled, I have good font sizes, and in general the uh, chart is easy to read and very clear. So this is what we're going after here so that you can be able to make a nice clear chart uh, for your aircraft and your capstone design courses to be able to display your performance to the customer. Okay, so um, part one of the project here is just to create the energy height contour plot, which is just the uh, background uh, that shows the lines of constant energy height here in a graph of true airspeed versus altitude. And I have a suggestion here on how to, you know, split your code up into sections using the double percent command. And these are good basic sections to use for almost any aero code or MATLAB code that you might write for an aero class. You know, we want to define our constants. We want to define or input our aircraft data. We want to do all the calculations we need to do to make our plots. And then we want to make our plots. So in this case, we're plotting energy height. And energy height is a function of altitude and airspeed. So we're going to need an array of altitude that goes from 0 to 80,000 feet in a specified number of steps. So you guys know how to make an array by now with a certain number of increments in it. So I'll let you do that. I would suggest starting with 10 steps for now. Make sure your code is working. Uh, once everything is working here, by the end of this project, then you can change your steps to 1,000 steps. And uh, my code takes from 3 to 5 minutes to run with 1,000 steps. Um, and, but you can try to speed yours up. Um, I didn't speed mine up a great deal, and so you may be able to beat that. Uh, same thing for an array of velocities. We're going, going to need an array of velocities from 1 to 1,200 knots, uh, starting off with 10 steps. And remember here that we want our uh, plot to be in knots on the bottom, but knots is not a standard unit for calculations, so you'll need to uh, have another array that has velocity in the appropriate units for the calculations. Okay, And then we'll need two for loops. So we'll need a double for loop, one on the outside and one on the inside, that's looping over uh, velocities and altitudes. Okay, so. I'll uh, briefly cover how to do this because we've talked about for loops, but we haven't talked about uh, double for loop. So I'm just going to make some dummy arrays of altitudes and velocities just for the purpose of demonstrating the for loops. So my uh, altitudes, or my H's, I'll just say from zero in increments of 1,000 to 10,000. And that would give me 10 for this case. And my V's, uh, in this case, need to go from 1 to 1,200 knots. But wh whatever, this is just an example. So I'm just going to do... 1, 10 knots to 100 knots, okay? I'll suppress both of those, and of course, I need a clear CLC at the top here and a header, but you guys know all that stuff already, okay? All right, so I'm going to make my first for loop. I'm going to use I as my counter for my first for loop, so I'm going to say for I equals 1 to length of H's, I want to, you know, do something here, and then I want to end that for loop, okay? But at every single one of these altitudes, I want to loop over all of the velocities that I have available. So yet the something that I want to do here is I want to create another loop. And I want to say 4, and I'm going to use J for my next counter, for J equals 1 to length 
of my velocities, my Vs. Okay, I want to, and this is where I really want to do something, and then I'm going to end that. Okay, so I have uh, two nested for loops now, and the outer one's looping over my altitudes, the inner one's looping over my velocities, and now I can do a calculation in here that requires both altitude and velocity in it. For example, the energy height calculation here is a function of altitude and velocity. So I have a calculation here that depends on altitude and velocity, and I need to store the result in a two-dimensional array corresponding to the correct altitude and velocity for each one. So uh, let's just say my variable that I was going to store these things in is HE for energy height, and it's going to be an array, and I need to address the values in the array using two indices, and those two indices are going to be the uh, counters for my inner and my outer for loops, I and J. I'm going to just have some calculation here for this equation, but I want to store the results of this calculation into this position in this two-dimensional array corresponding to I and J for that altitude and velocity. And of course for the calculation here, we simply need to program up uh, this equation. Okay, So we need to have H plus V squared divided by 2 times G. And uh, parentheses in denominators was a common mistake in Project 2, so just be sure you're paying attention to order of operations and stuff, okay? But again, this is not going to work here because what is H? I don't have H defined anywhere in this yet. I just put down H because I'm writing down the concept of what I need to do. And now I actually need to insert a number into this calculation coming from MATLAB's uh, memory. Okay, and the only thing in MATLAB's memory is H's, is eight, this array HS. Okay, but I know that I'm at position I in this array of H's. So if I simply type in H's and um, call the element I out of that array of H's, now that will result in a number that will get inserted into this equation that will go into my energy height. Same thing with velocity here. I don't need to have... Uh, this this capital V here is not an actual thing in memory right now. Uh, the actual thing in memory is Vs, Vs, and that's a function of J, because J is my counter for that's going over the length of Vs. Okay. So now this is an equation that will work, and the results will get stored into this two-dimensional array corresponding to altitude and airspeed. Okay, so that's how um, two nested for loops work. And I really encourage you to open up this variable in your workspace called HE and explore this. Uh, now, mine's a thousand by a thousand here because I ran my final code. Uh, but again, the I's here, which are the rows, are all the information at each altitude. And the J's, the columns, are all the information across the velocities. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is to create a contour plot of the energy height data using the contour command. How are you going to know how to use the contour command? Come up here to the MATLAB documentation and type contour and spend a minute or maybe less than that reading about how to use the contour command. And uh, there's many different variations on the command. Uh, we'll be using these levels here um, and we'll be using this part of the command as well. So I encourage you to read all of these. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to have an energy height at every altitude and airspeed. So we have an X, a Y, and a Z in our situation. And that's how, the basic form of how we'll use the contour command. Now the other thing what we'll do is we'll specify the contours at 10,000 foot levels. So that on the left uh, hand side of the graph on the vertical axis they'll match up with the altitudes in 10,000 foot levels. So we'll need to use the levels input to the contour command. So that's right here. You can click on this. It'll jump you to the right place in the documentation for levels, and then you can click on levels again, and it tells you all about how to use these levels. Okay, So read that and try to create your levels so that you can end up with an energy height diagram that looks like mine. And then the other thing we'll do is we'll make these lines of constant energy height a light gray by adding a color input to the command. So at the end of the contour command here, um, we'll, you'll put a comma, and then you'll put my color command here and the way that this works is it says get ready to accept a color comma the next thing that's coming at it is a color and the three values here in the square brackets are a red green blue color value and um, we're setting it to 0.7 times these so it's going to end up being uh, a light gray okay zero 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 is black and one 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 is white and so we're 
going 0.7 towards white, so it's going to be a light gray. So the results should look like this. Okay, when you get there, you're done with part one. Moving on with part two is we need to find the drag of the F16 uh, so that we can have that component uh, for the uh, finding the specific excess power. And while we're here, we'll plot the drag as well. Okay, so in order to find the drag, we're going to use the curve fitting uh, toolbox in MATLAB. And in order to do this, you'll need to have the curve fitting uh, and optimization toolboxes installed. So go to add-ins and make sure that you have those installed. We will be using the curve fitting tool, which is CF tool in MATLAB. So if you can't type in CF tool in MATLAB and press enter and have a, a GUI pop up, then you don't have it installed. Okay. All right, so um, I'll walk you through how to use the curve fitting tool in MATLAB. And the first thing uh, that we'll do is we want to get in, uh, for example, uh, CD not here as a function of Mach number, and then we want to fit a curve to that so that we can type in arbitrary Mach numbers later and get a corresponding value of CDO along that curve. Okay, so we want to, uh, first of all, get these parasite drag values into MATLAB, into an array, and then we want to get the Mach numbers into MATLAB as well. So I'm just going to come down here and create a new section of my code to play around with this and to show you what you need to do. And you could retype these into MATLAB, and that would be fine. I'm going to copy and paste them. I'm going to say CDO uh, equals, I'm going to set these up in array and I'm going to press control V to paste them. And there's my pasting there. So now I can just come in here and arrange them all in an array. And then I've got my values of CDO. I need to do the same thing with Mach number. I'm going to highlight those, come in here, say Mach equals, put some brackets here and just paste inside the brackets. And then I've got all these here. And then I could also do K while I'm at it. And just to get all these in MATLAB easily without having to retype them. Okay. And so now I control entered that. So those are in my uh, workspace now. All right. And the next thing I want to do is to uh, fit a curve. And I'll start off by fitting a curve to the CDO versus uh, mock data. I'm going to make sure my memory is cleared out here. So. All right, so I'm going to come back over to MATLAB and I'm going to type CF tool and the curve fitting tool is going to pop up. And there it is. And now it's going, giving me the option here to select my X and my Y data and it's going to pick things that are in the workspace. So for my X data, I'm going to uh, select mock and for my Y data, I'm going to select CDO. And here is my graph of mock versus CDO. And now I can choose the type of fit that I want up here. Um, I can choose a linear fit, and that's not going to look so great. I could choose a polynomial fit. I can mess around with the order of the polynomial, and that doesn't look so great. Uh, you're really going to find yourself here using an interpolation or a type of interpolation between these points. And uh, this linear fit is fine. Uh, in reality, it's not you know, going to be sharp corners like that. So there is other options here. There's a cubic spline. In reality, it's not going to look like that either. Uh, but there's also this uh, shape preserving linear, uh, interpolation and it's a little bit smoother and kind of realistic. So uh, I'm going to go with that one. And so now this is the curve fit that I need to save to my workspace and to be able to load up to use later. Okay, so I want to go to uh, fit, save to workspace, and it's giving me an option here to uh, give it a name. I'm going to call it CDO V mock and I'm gonna press OK. And now I see in my workspace here, I've got this uh, curve fit object CDO VMock. I'm gonna do the same thing with K. I'm just gonna change my Y data. Now my, now my graph has changed because I'm plotting the induced drag factor K and this fit still looks good. So I can go to File, Save to Workspace and I can call this K VMock and press OK. And now I've got two of these fit options in my workspace, KVMock and CDO VMock. Okay. And now I can create a new array of uh, mock numbers, or I can just give it any mock number. So I can say CDO VMock, and I can give it a mock number that's not in my list here of my original mock number. So if I give it a mock number of 0 0.5, it's going to give me a value of CDO here. And this value of CDO is in between this one and this one. Uh, likewise, if I give it a Mach number that's right in the transonic drag rise, uh, let's go 0 
it gives me a uh, parasite drag of 0 0.03, which is right in between these two values here on my CDO. Okay. Uh, and oh, by the way, if I uh, create an array of Mach numbers, so if I say m equals uh, 0 0.3 and increments of 0.1 to, to 1, and then I say CDO V mock and I give it that whole array, guess what's going to happen now? I'm going to get a whole array of CDOs out for these unique mock numbers that I just specified. Okay, so this is exactly the behavior that we want. It's exactly the same for uh, K, KV mock, and I can do the same thing with the Curfit KV mock that's in my workspace. Okay, so we've got those curve, fit made, curve fits made, and you can make a plot like this to verify your results by just creating an array of mock numbers like I did and creating a plot of the results of CDO VMock given those new mock numbers that you created. But now we need to save those results, and we're going to save them in a .mat file, which is a native way to save MATLAB data. And I'm giving you the save command here, so it's really easy to do. You just need to replace the um, names of my curve fit functions with the names of your curve fit functions. So I think I called that that, KV mock that. I'm going to control enter this to run it. And now when I look at my uh, current folder, I'll see that I've got this file here called f16 drag data dot mat. And that's now where the results are saved. I can now clear my workspace, clear everything, and I can load f16 uh, drag data dot mat and the two things that pop up in my workspace are these two curve fit objects okay so I, when I'm making my uh, code for project 5 now all I need to have is one line near the top that says load f16 drag data dot mat and it will load that up and I'm also giving you that command here here's how you call that in a script file to load that up that'll result in those curve fit objects being in your memory and then you can uh, use those curve fit objects to find your parasite drag and induce drag factor at any Mach number. Okay, the other thing that you need to do is call your Atmos 206 function at the appropriate place to get the standard atmosphere properties for uh, calculating the drag of the aircraft. Because to calculate the whole drag of the aircraft, we're going to need dynamic pressure, which means we're going to need density. Okay, so you're going to need to call Atmos 206 at the appropriate place in these nested for loops. And uh, guess what? You could call Atmos 206 here. Uh, and I forget what my Atmos function call looks like, so I'm going to go over to Atmos, and I'm just going to copy the top function, the top function definition line out of my function. Come back over here and paste it in here. Here's my function definition. I'm going to throw away P because I don't need it. I'm going to throw away T and A because I don't need those. My uh, input value is going to be H H's of I in this case. That's going to get me my uh, altitude, and then my units here. I, I can just hard type in in English okay so this is how I can get row out using my Atmos 206 function now we need to step back because in this loop here we're looping over altitudes in this loop here we're looping over velocities but altitude is not changing inside of this inner for loop the only thing that's changing is velocity inside this inner for loop so this is going to be terribly inefficient all I need to do is move that to my outer for loop because it's only when this outer for loop increments that my altitude is actually changing. So that's the only time I need to update my row value. Okay, So keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing you'll need to do is to make a standalone function. So you'll need to make a new M file, make a function, just like we did for Atmos 206, so that you can come in here and calculate drag using that function. I could store those drag values in a variable called D, using indices of i and j so every altitude and every velocity i'm going to have a drag stored and then i could call my function let's say that i called it something crazy like calculate drag and now i could pass everything that i need into my drag function to calculate drag the only thing that i would suggest is somewhere up here near the top you have loaded your f16 drag data dot map file so in this workspace you have those curve fits here you calculate drag, you're going to pass it certain things, right? Like you're going to pass it S, you're going to pass it rho, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you can also pass it your curve fits. So you could pass it CDO V mock and KV mock. And now when your function receives these curve fit objects, you can use them just like we used it down here, given a mock number to get your CDO and your K for your drag calculation. Okay. So you need to go off and make an independent function. This is not everything you will need in the function. You need to think about it, write out the equation for drag, write your function, 
and then this is how you can store the results in a two-dimensional array. Uh, once you do that for your 10 by 10 values for altitude and airspeed, you can use the contour function again to plot the drag. This is what you should get. Uh, yours might look rougher if you're only using 10 points in each direction. And now we're going to add markers to each of these contour levels. So you're going to use the uh, contour command here with everything that you need inside the command, which I didn't put here in the handout. And you're going to grab the output of that, which is the contour object and matrix itself. And then if you use the command C label, just like think X label or Y label, now you're using C label and you give it those contour objects, um, it will automatically label those as it sees fit and you'll end up with something like this. And by the way, you want to turn, you know, I, I like turning the box on for this uh, to get nice clear the borders on each side of the graph since there is a definite limit to altitude and airspeed and you can just use the box on command to turn on those borders too. Okay, moving on to part three. Now that we've got drag and we've got our code running, we're looping over altitudes and airspeeds, uh, we can actually go ahead and calculate specific excess power. And here's the equation for specific excess power. You want to make another function here. So you're going to, uh, again, have an array of P sub S, and it's going to be defined in terms of I and J for altitude and airspeed. And you're going to have another function here that says calc P sub S, and you want to pass that function everything you need to calculate P sub S and then store it into this P sub S array. And I ended up, uh, for the sake of efficiency, just calculating drag inside of that P sub S function. So this calculate drag function, which was an intermediate step that we used, uh, is no longer needed the way I did it because I calculate drag just directly inside the calc P sub S function. So in that case, I comment out this calculate drag function when I got to part three of my code because I'm just, now I'm just calculating P sub S. All right, and then you can make another contour plot the same way you did before, but now you should have contours of P sub S uh, that look like this and they automatically get labeled. And this is a great plot. We're almost there. We just need to correct a couple uh, physical limitations of the aircraft. One of them is, you know, even though it's got positive specific excess power here, uh, we're going to be lower than the stall speed of the aircraft. So we want to blank out those regions. And then even though we have positive excess power out here at a thousand knots, that's going to be beyond the dynamic pressure limit of the airframe. So we want to blank out those uh, areas that we can't actually reach with our aircraft. And that's what part four is about here. First of all, there is some streamlining we can do. For example, don't load that drag data file inside the for loops, load it up here outside the for loops. Um, you know, don't call Atmos from inside your calculate P sub S function because then it's going to be calling it for every airspeed, even though altitude is not necessarily changing for every airspeed. Stuff like that. You can pre-allocate your these arrays using zeros. So here's how I did it here, and you could put that up here before your arrays. So that way you have these arrays already defined. If it ends up being a thousand by a thousand, you'll just have a thousand by a thousand zeros, and that can speed up your code as well. Uh, we already talked about this one, and now we need to remove these non-physical regions. So inside of my piece of best function here, I need an if statement checking CL. And if CL exceeds CL max, then I'm just going to set P sub S equals infinity. And this INF is a special character in MATLAB. If I come in here and I say A equals INF, that's uh, a known quantity to MATLAB, and it sets that uh, numerical value to infinity, and it won't show up on a plot, uh, which is kind of a nice feature. So you'll need an if statement to define uh, that. And then... Uh, we want to have another if statement where if the dynamic pressure exceeds the F-16 structural limit, then we also set P sub S equal to infinity in that case. So in fact, because we have two conditionals here, you could ha just have one if statement, and it could be if CL is greater than CL max or Q is greater than Q max, set P sub S equal to infinity. So we can do all that with one if statement, and then you could have an else statement uh, in the case that those things aren't true, then just go on to calculate P sub S as normal. Okay. All right, and then we want to uh, tweak the plot. First of all, after you do that, you should get these blanked out regions here to the left and the right of the plot. And now we want to label those as, you know, that's our lift limit there, our stall limit, and our Q limit over here for dynamic pressure. And we also want to put this uh, standard aircraft data block uh, in our graph too that shows the specific configuration because specific excess power changes based upon your load factor, your thrust setting, your aircraft configuration, your weight. 
And so we want to make those re things very clear to the viewer uh, that those are the quantities used in this chart. So um, we're going to add an annotation box with this data block in it, and then we're going to add text to our plot to denote the max lift and the Q limit. And I have made this easy on you so that you can use this in future arrow classes and produce outstanding quality plots. So if you go to my sample code that I've provided with you here, I have updated it with some examples for annotating figures. Read the comments that I put in here on how to use these annotations. You're going to have to specify a location for the annotations and the way that MATLAB interprets this location is different for the annotation command versus the text command. For the uh, main annotation data block, we're going to use the annotation command and we're going to send it a location in a string and that location is specified in terms of 0 to 1 for the height and 0 to 1, so it's just a percentage location. That's as opposed to text for this maximum lift and Q limit. I just added text to the plot, and in that case, you can add those in the native units of the plot. So this maximum lift here would probably be an X coordinate of 100 and a Y coordinate of 5,000, and that would be the start of this maximum lift blocks, and then you can specify a rotation angle to rotate it and a font size and all that fun stuff so that you can end up with a publication quality figure here that is uh, truly outstanding and you can compare mine to Dr. Brand's textbook and its publication quality. Okay, once you get all that set up uh, with the annotation uh, block and the text here, um, the contour labels are still going to be all over the place because MATLAB is going to be trying to do them automatically and on these uh, contours here on the edges of the flight envelope it's going to be putting a bunch of different labels and it looks like trash. So you want to manually set those contour locations um, using the C label command and sending it the flag manual and it will open up with a uh, figure GUI for you with crosshairs and you can click, 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 click and tell it exactly where you want each contour label to appear and then that's the final step. Once you've done that, change your uh, number of altitude and velocity steps to a thousand uh, sit back and wait for about five minutes and then label the contours manually and then don't forget to have that save as EMF command after the plot so you can save that thing directly as a vector graphics. There are some optional parts for some bonus points. You can change your load factor and uh, see how your piece of S uh, shrinks for a uh, piece of S greater than zero with three G's. You can plot both of those uh, as curves of different color and show the difference. Uh, or you can use the data from your 210 aircraft from JET to recreate your piece of S plot for your JET aircraft. All you have to do is replace the relevant aircraft parameters from with your aircraft from JET. You can save your piece of S uh, data for your aircraft and for the F-16 that you did in this project. You can subtract the two and then you can create a new contour plot that shows piece of S from a negative range to a positive range and that shows where your aircraft would have um, an advantage over the F-16 or a disadvantage to the F-16 based upon your specific excess power. Okay, for the final submission, give me your piece of S graph, your final one for the F-16 from part four and anything optional that you made from part five. Put it in a Word document, give me an explanation on how you made the graph, what it tells us about the aircraft, what everything means on the graph, turn in all your code properly commented. Um, uh, Going back to the drag portion, I made a separate M file for doing that drag stuff and using the curve fitting tool. If you do that, then give me that code too. Print it to a PDF. Now, of course, give me a documentation statement and then give me some feedback about the course. Tell me what you liked about the course. Tell me uh, something you'd like to see changed or added or any, any way that I can make the course better. Okay? All right, so uh, we've got five lessons to do this and I'll be in class uh, to help you, so I'll see you there.